In this lesson, we're going to add a menu bar to our Notepad program. Now, to have a menu bar, we do need a Q main window rather than Q widget. Now, um, to make that work, rather than writing the Notepad program from scratch, we're going to use a Q main window and we're going to make our Notepad widget that we used previously the central widget for our Q main window. Apart from that, most of the code is going to be very similar to what we've had before. OK, this is essentially the program we had when we made the Notepad widget. All I've done is I've added in um, an import of a Q main window, a Q action and a Q app, which we have seen um, in previous lessons. And look, if I run this, um, we get what we've had before where we can, well, I can't save anything, there's nothing there. I could save a file or open a file or so on. So let's do what I said we're going to do. So the first thing is we don't want to be a Q widget because we want a menu bar. What we want to use instead is a, um, a Q main window. So I'm going to call this one writer and that's a Q main window. And just, just like we've done previously, what I want to do is I want to uh, initialize that just like we've got there. Now, what we've got to do is we need um, an instance of the widget that we had before um, for our notepad. And I'm just going to call that my form um, widget. And that's going to equal an instance of notepad. And now I've done that, I can set the central widget um, of the Q main window, and that's just going to be self.form widget. Now I think if I run this, we should get something, and it looks almost the same. Oh, sorry, I haven't actually done anything yet. Let's get rid of that. I've also got to change it so that we're bringing up an instance of writer instead. Now if I run that, and why have we not got anything at the moment happening? Oh, of course, because at this point we're not showing anything. And then if I run that, I'm going to cancel the one that was there before. Let's run that. And we've got a window. Now, those of you who are quite um, astute, you might notice that this now says writer.pi rather than um, P and PYQT or um, PyQ5 text edits. So, um, so we, we can see that we're running this. So what I want to do is I now want to, just like we've done in previous ones, um, just going back to here, I want to call my um, initialization function here and we're going to set everything up. Now most of this is going to be the same as we're going to have before. I want a menu bar and I want a menu bar and I want to add a file menu to it. Let's just keep running, seeing what's going on. So look, now I've got a menu bar there, nothing in there though. And then I want some actions. So I'm gonna put these all in one go. I want a new action, a save action, and a um, open action, and a quit action. And if you watched the menu bar lesson, there's nothing new here. This gives us a shortcut, and the ambisand helps us um, access that. So now if we run this, Oh, sorry, I've not actually added those yet to my file menu. So, of course, let's do that. And now if I run that, you can see that we've got these choices, but at the moment, none of them are actually going to do anything because we've got to now add on the triggers. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, two triggers. So the first one is I'm going to have a trigger for quit. Now, nothing new here. It's just going to call this self.quit trigger. So it's self. So it must be within this class. So we better write that then. So we've got um, define, whoops, quit underscore trigger and we want to take an instance of self and all we're going to do is try and get that right and we're going to do q app dot 
quit. So now if we and quit it will quit out and it's calling here. Now what I don't want to do is have to rewrite all of these. So let's just see um, how we're going to do that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to um, respond. So here we're going to say look, so when someone clicks on a thing in file then um, get it and then I want to put the whole function down here and we'll talk about what it does. Just trying to save time. So we're saying here def respond um, self queue. Now we're used to this kind of thing before when we were just printing what button was pressed in a previous one. So what we do here we say self equals queue dot text. So what I'm saying here is can I get the text of the th um, the thing that sent the signal? So it will either be new, it will be either and save or um, ambisand open or ambisand quit. So the ambisand quit doesn't really matter because it's going to quit out and do something. So we can kind of ignore that one. And I'm saying if the thing is new, then could I call self dot form widget um, dot clear text? What does that do? So it goes to self dot form widget. So self dot form as the notepad, and then call the clear text function that's there. So it calls that one there, and we've got the same thing going on here. They're the only things that can give signals, so it can do the lot. Now I could have written a separate one of these for each of those. This just shows how we could put that um, all together. So now when we run this, I can save that way or I could open with this one and we've now got our um, program with a, um, a file menu that can call those things just like we saw before and of course we can quit in the same way. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, think about subscribing. I've included a link to the code that I've used in the video below in the description. Stay in infield with Winfield.